Greetings and welcome to Advanced Technology Solutions introductory and description and how to um, for the Philips Ceramic Master Color CDM MW aka Medium Watt available in 210 watt and 315 watt versions. Um, we're going to go over quite a few uh, different aspects of the technology, how to wire it, the lamp sockets, and whatnot. What we're going to start off with is the um, lamp sockets. Uh, first, I should state, even though the ballast is spec for 200 volt to 277 volt, we're actually going to show you how to wire it up from a 120 volt outlet, um, so you don't have to rewire your entire place. Um, first thing I want to point out is, if you go to our website um, regarding this lamp, we actually have quite a bit of information about it. So we do recommend that you go through the entire page, you know, you don't have to, but we recommend that you go through the entire page so you can understand um, all there is to know about the lamp technology because there is quite a bit. There um, also, uh, we'll talk about the socket uh, differences and, <coughs> excuse me, what sockets um, you can run with it and what so sockets they originally came out with. Originally, the 315 came out in 210 came out in what is called PGZ18, which is a new socket format. As you can tell, it's um, still round, but it has two contact points, one of which uh, has a flat mark, um, if we can get our camera to focus, and then the other one is round, and that is to keep the um, anode and cathode um, circuitry intact, so when you put it in the base, it will still go Let's make sure we have that yep. um, in there to fit. And whenever you're screwing these in, um, it's just a simple twist. But we do not recommend twisting by the glass because if that breaks, your are SOL. Um, so you actually twist it there a quarter turn and that's how they go in and out. This lamp was the first one out. A lot of companies took it and ran with it and then brought out their own ballast and whatnot. It's a great lamp, however, it does have some drawbacks. Being in such a, a small format, it actually uh, increases the temperature at the arc tube, thus um, shortening its life just a little bit. Um, not by much, but um, it, 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 it does, and they're working on uh, fixing that. Also, it requires utilizing this uh, base, a completely new uh, reflector format, and a lot of customers didn't like that, so um, a lot of people actually brought out mogul to pgz18 adapters that is actually not recommended by any lamp manufacturer any respected lamp manufacturer because it adds resistance into the ballast line and how ballast actually make the lamps work is by basically seeing how much power is, is needed resistance and when you get into electronic ballast it actually has an active uh, watch of what's going on so when you add that resistance it just adds problems then phillips came out with the uh, Mogul EX39 format, which is an EX39 EX40. There is some uh, misinformation out there. A lot of people think that, I should pay attention to where I'm at, um, that this uh, base, lamp, lamp base, will not fit in a standard Mogul socket. That is actually incorrect. There, in the commercial world, in a open bay, fixture that is using a metal halide this has been a common base for quite a while and what it did was prevent the use of a we we'll use an uh, hps retroid a um, non-protected lamp in the protected socket on hps and the retro whites they are protected so they don't require a protected um, socket or um, an exclusionary to, to keep you into that so you can actually use this lamp in this socket, the EX39 EX40, or the E39 E40 standard mogul socket. And to show you a little, we like technology, we want to show you everything we can. The, the side cutaway, because we don't actually want to waste energy um, cutting it. Um, the standard mogul socket, the white one over here, you can see that both uh, lamp types, the EX and the E, 
base are able to make contact with both the anode and cathode on the sides and at the bottom, whereas on, on the exclusionary uh, socket, only the exclusionary lamp, this one, can work in the socket. This lamp, the ceramic metal halide, standard or, you know, S51, will not work in that socket. And then that just gives you a um, description on that. So, also what we're going to discuss is how to wire this up. As you can see on here, it, it does say 200 to 277 volt. And that does confuse quite a few uh, consumer and small commercial customers because 277 volt and then saying a white and black wire doesn't make a lot of sense. However, in a 277, in an industrial setup, 277 um, is a half leg of the 480, so you, you would have a um, hotline of 277 and then a um, neutral and then your ground. In our houses and small uh, commercial setups, you actually do not have that um, luxury and we don't want that luxury. So if you were to wire up, and we'll go through all the different wiring options, but if you were to bring, be bringing in to 2240 from your breaker panel to your ballast setups, you'd actually have line one and line two, which are both hots. In your house you get, to get 220, you have two hots plus a, a ground. Neutral is not used. So what you would actually do is hook up black to line one, and then uh, white to line two, and not worry about the, the color of this. It would, it's not common anymore. Um, you just want to make sure that you, you keep it set to line one and line two, however your breaker panel set up, and then ground. If you do not have, um, if you're not going to hardwire it that way, and if you have a 220 outlet, um, and you have a 220 plug, um, depending on what style um, plug you actually have, your cable may have two black wires or a white wire and a black wire. Um, in this case, we can actually show you, um, this is a meant for a 220 outlet and it's got two blacks and a green for common. You can also have a cable that comes with a blue and a brown and a green. This is typically EU standards. Um, I figured off the top of my head which one of these is line and um, common, but I've actually found that um, a lot of these uh, cables actually are crossed. So it's best to check your local area and just make sure you buy a good plug. But here in the US, if you have a 220 outlet, you would just take your black, and you have a, a cord set, you would just take your black to black, and your white to white, and your um, green ground to ground. If you do not have uh, 220 available to you at a socket, or you do not want to rewire your complete um, area, you can actually get away with getting a step up down transformer available on Amazon or eBay or plenty of other um, sites. Um, don't get uh, scared away from the size of this one. This is actually 1500. It can actually power four of these um, per 20 amp outlet that you have. Um, and this is actually a one that we're setting up for a customer we're playing with at first. We have 220 here, so we don't really need it. Um, but if you were just running a 315 watt, you could get away with a 500 watt um, step up down transformer and it would be a lot smaller, almost the size of your ballast. Um, and what you would do then to, to wire it up is, is still the same, um, black to black, white to white, and green to green, and plug it in and you'd be good. Um, one thing we want to note on step up down transformers is you want to cover up the 110 volt outlet if it has one and only use a 220 and size your power cable accordingly. If you're running just one um, ballast, you can get away with an 18 gauge power wire. Um, if you're going to run four, um, you need to step up to a 14 gauge um, power wire um, and then just tie off um, each one of your um, appropriate uh, wires to each each one and you'll have your 220 and on these ballasts you actually have a um, depending on the ballast ones that come in 12 to 16 inches worth of 
um, ballast uh, input cable length, and then um, at a minimum 12 inches of output <coughs> wires. On the output, you'll notice that it's red and blue. In electronic ballast, that's common practice. As you can see from this PG Z18 socket, it's got a red marking for um, the, the center contact of the lamp and no marking for the outer contact. On your mogul socket, um, what you'll do is you'll hook up your black wire to your red wire and your white wire to your blue wire or there you can use a, a, a cable to increase your length. You can go up to 10 meters, 28 feet, 30 feet basically. Um, also this ballast is dimmable so you can get away with um, taking a thinner and 15 watt lamp and dimming it down to 50 percent or if you use a potentiometer based dimming circuit, um, really simple you can actually um, achieve um, 50 to 100 percent um, power um, quite accurately. Also what we're going to show you is if you're going to be hooking this up because um, one of the benefits of this is you can utilize your current reflectors. One of the downsides of this lamp is all the reflectors that I've seen made for this um, and we've looked at them all, the reflectors are great in theory but in reality, they're not that designed any better than most of the horizontals out there. So we actually uh, love this feature that you can just screw this into your standard fixture. How you would do that if you already have a, um, let's say, hydro farm or sunlight supply fixture that already has a cord set. Like in this case, you have a sunlight supply cord set. Make sure you can see that. Um, what you do is you buy um, a part number, you just go into your local hydro shop and buy part number 903090. For this, it's about six, seven bucks. Um, if, it's, if you have the hydro farm cord set um, reflector, you would get a B-A-R-E-F. If you go in and just say those, those two uh, uh, product codes um, to your local hydro shop, you don't even have to tell them where to get it from. They'll actually know that the B-A-R-E-F is hydro farm and they order it directly from them. Um, and the 903090, as you can see, it's Sun Systems Online Supply, they just call them up. And what you would do is you just wire your white from this adapter plug to your blue, your black to your um, I do recommend zip tying it here a little bit. And on your ground, what you, for this, you would take a nut and um, bolt. And I also recommend zip tying it so that way if you have any pull on here, it's not going to ruin your ballast connections, it's just going to ruin a $7 plug. On your input line, um, we recommend just uh, wrapping your power wires up in a circle and then tying them off if you have the power plug tie off and zip tie that and you're um, good to go. The cool thing about these ballasts, and then you just plug it in and um, be golden. Um, if you were to plug this in, and I'm showing you this um, so we don't get, you know, get scared. If we go ahead and plug this in to the, um, oh, that moved on us. Um, if you go ahead and plug this in and not have your um, cord set plugged in, it's not going to actually do anything. Now, I wouldn't recommend going sticking my fingers in, in that plug set at the moment because it is trying, it, it's, it's sensing to see if it can fire and then if it senses and your fingers will trigger it, it will try to fire it. So you, there's no fire risk that way. So um, just showing you that. We want to show other, the safety aspects of all, all this because with any lighting, especially when we were stepping up to 220 volts or using 220 volts, we want to make sure that we're not gonna um, electrocute ourselves. That would not be good. So what I'm gonna go ahead and show you now is how to actually wire this up for a um, setup. If I can find my other cable set, there it is. <laughs> Joyous. Um, I'm gonna show you how to wire this up and then after that I'm gonna show you um, how to actually utilize this in most of your reflectors using a um, RAF 400 which is available available from your local hydro shop um, again seven to ten bucks that actually extends the lamp out so it can be more centered um, so we're gonna go ahead and wire this up and then show you that so what we do is take white to white um, typically 
Um, we just show pictures and whatnot, and we do have a, another ballast video. Um, but I do, as a person watching online videos and how to's on certain things, I want to see it being done, not just a before and after. So, um, this is why you're seeing this. And again, all of our videos are unscripted because we want it to be natural and actually um, be the way I'd want to be watching it. And the more we script, the more we get off. So on the socket, we're going to go ahead and use a standard mogul socket so that way everyone can see that it does in fact work with a standard mogul socket. And we'll bring that out just a little bit and then spiral that up. Kind of defeats the purpose, but it works. And we'll go white to blue. And again, you can go 10 meters, which is um, more than any other ballast, um, you know, 400 watt, 1000 watt, unless you were to have bought a extended range igniter. Um, not really necessary if you're going 15 feet, um, but recommended. Um, so we have this wired up, that wired up. And we'll go ahead and put our lamp in the socket. And how we're actually achieving R220 here on, the, on this test bench is using a step um, up down transformer. As you can see right here, again, it's 1500 watts. So you don't, don't get concerned about the size. A 500 watt for one of these would, would be perfect. It's about 29 bucks online. The only one thing we do recommend and I just didn't do it for um, video's sake, is do your wiring inside of a junction box for your input um, side and then one for your output side. And if you can, um, get a junction box or um, do it sideways to where you can drill a hole here and, and mount it to one of the mount mounting brackets, make it a little bit more solid, not really necessary, but um, that's just an extra safety precaution. Um, going back to the how safe this ballast is, you can actually run this ballast in a wall if you put it in um, in between your walls. Um, as long as it doesn't have insulation within three inches around it, it's not a fire hazard if this thing were to have a catastrophic failure. Unless this were to have a short, at that short point you would have your fire, but it wouldn't be because of the ballast. That's why you use a junction box. Um, <clears throat> also, if you go to our uh, website, because we you have the dimming capability, and actually look at um, our page on the lamp if you scroll down you'll actually find this image and this will actually tell you um, how if you were to dim it down to 50 percent by um, connecting these two wires together basically giving it a zero volt um, anything between zero and three volts you'll get 50 percent power and um, as you go up in volts um, less resistance i.e an open um, circuit you'll have full power so you can actually get it to be very exact based on voltage so if you're doing light harvesting let's say in a greenhouse um, and you have a, um, photometrics and you have the ability to actually accurately um, do it through a pick you can actually be extremely efficient also when you dim the lamp the more you dim it the redder let's call it, it gets the less blue is emitted the less green per se is emitted and the more red is is permit uh, um uh, uh put out wrong word for permitted the um that's shown in the uh, i was pointing on the wrong side that's shown in the cct side and then you have your cri and your lumens lumens and cri for us really don't mean a whole lot um because the higher the cri the actually worse it can be. If you had a 100 CRI lamp in a horticulture setup, you should only be growing cucumbers because that's a really high blue. So let's actually get on to um, showing this in a uh, reflector setup with that extension socket. And what you would actually do is put that, uh, this is a Sunlight Supply Super Sun, you just mount that extension um, adapter in, in place where your mogul socket used to attach and then attach your mogul socket to that and that way you would have a centered lamp we don't sell the um adapter however your local shop or online will have it um so we'll go ahead and plug this in and show you that how easy it is now going back to um this circuit you, with any electronics you have to be careful so 
once you plug this in, you should never touch it, never plug anything else into this. Um, you know, have this preferably in a junction box, have this in a junction box, just a little dollar one that I just showed you, and you'll be good. Um, because it's 220 volts and it, it will kill you. 120 will kill you too, but 220, um, it's not as much as amperage kills you. 220 will, will what it will do if you grip it, will actually hold your hand tighter than 120, thus giving it more time to do damage. It's not that the 220 alone is going to kill you, it's, it, it goes into a whole lot of stuff. So just be careful on that. But once you power it up, as you can see, it's coming up and firing up for us. And the cool thing about the electronic ballast versus magnetic ballast um, in the Philips lineup and other respected brands as as you notice it actually turn on and fire up and fire up and fire up it wasn't a surge of power that that got it going and then um trying to get it up to max power asap what it's doing is it's ignited the um arc tube and chemicals and salts inside of it and then slowly stepping it up step by step to where it's going to reach full power within a few minutes and you'll actually see it here. Um, I don't know if this camera should, will pick it up, but you'll actually see it to where it, it gets up to a, a point, lets it sit there for a second, then steps it up again, then does it again and again. And what that does is it extends the life of the lamp and gives you a higher um, lumen performance overall for the life of the lamp. And if it's done right, it will actually um, extend the, the lamp life just a little bit. That's great in commercial setups where you have these things mounted 75 feet up in the air or they're hard to get to uh, or you have a uh, hundred of them. Um, however, in um, small setups, one to five setups, um, that doesn't matter to us because we're typically replacing them before they even um, diminish to the point where our eyes uh, see it. I would show you the dimming um, characteristics. Um, Actually, I, w I will show you the dimming characteristics um, in one of our next upcoming videos uh, with a foot candle meter. Ours is being loaned out at the moment. It will not dim. If you have these connected together right, it, this is a safe side. This is a low voltage 10 volt side. Um, if you were to have these connected or set to dim, it will not dim for 15 minutes And what that uh, after the lamp is turned on. And what that does is protect the lamp um, for full life and full lumen maintenance because it needs to get the arc tube up to temperature before it starts dimming it down. Um, after that, it will immediately dim until you take the, the dimming circuit out of the, out of the picture. Um, so as you can see, this is a 200 to 277 volt ballast. It is actually running off of a 120 volt plug, um, but we're running it through a step up transformer. And as you can see, this is all safe. You know, we don't recommend <clears throat> taking a bath with it or anything like that but um, as long as you um, don't get stupid with your electronics and just treat everything with respect you'll be okay um, and we'll go ahead and show you since I want to interrupt the video real quick and go over the dimming I forgot that in the main video so on this ballast you can actually it's one ballast that runs the 315 watt and 210 watt um, lamps how you do that is on the dimming side of the ballast and i'll show you that here in a second there's a little cap you take that off and flip the two switches up for 315 watt both of them down for 210 watt in this ballast i actually set it up with one up one down so you can actually see it even though it's uh, a bit hard to actually see um, but you can see that one is up and one is down and we'll go ahead and um, pop the other one down as you can see it's down and then we'll go ahead and pop it up I'm watching through the camera and then that's up and then we'll pop the other one up that one's up so we'll go ahead and pop that one down and then that one down so for 210 watt down 315 watt up that has a label on there that's a Philips feature and um, we'll go back to the video you a cool thing because as you know with us here at advanced tech nothing is safe from being taken apart so you can actually see, um, we'll cover that up to where you can't see the light. They actually put a potting compound in here that's a, a soft with heat sink pads for the 
um, one of the transformers that probably gets toasty. And then the only thing I didn't pot was the caps on this side as well as this circuit. Um, they do ground out the case right here as well as on the circuit board and then this one goes to the top lid. And what that does is protect from um, interfer uh, um, interference uh, either getting out from the ballast or in. Uh, another option you have is actually adding heat sinks to this section here and this section on this side and what that will do is actually um, keep your ballast running cooler as well as extend the life of the ballast because the ballast have a life rating of 60,000 hours which if you're used to a magnetic core they're they run for a hundred thousand hours no problems you might have to replace an igniter or a capacitor in that time um, but typically not um, so as you can see it, it came on nicely in a standard mogul socket um, you can go ahead and, and touch it a little bit it is starting to get a little toasty um, however, if you were to have air blowing on this and air cool it, it will take about 85% of the heat away. With standard um, HPS lamps, the big problem with them is the poor color for our applications is they are just a, a radiant heat source. Whereas with ceramic, its heat sources, its heat is generated in uh, convection format to where actually, uh, uh, I guess that's the word, that you can actually just take away with air. Um, so you can actually get away with taking 80% of the heat away with just an air cooled hood. And that's another reason why we like this uh, lamp base because you can use it in your standard air cooled hoods that you already have set up. And with the size of the ballast, you can actually mount this right on top of each reflector or make a really small um, ballast bay that you can actually air cool to keep everything running even cooler. So we'll go ahead and turn this off. You can actually see the arc tube is, is nice and red. And the benefit of having um, ceramic arc tubes versus HPS oops, is an HPS arc tube cools down so fast as soon as you turn the light off, it stops putting off infrared heat. As much as ceramic doesn't generate that much infrared, once the light source is turned off, it actually is the infrared being outputted as actually a trigger me mechanism for plants for flowering whether they're in veg stage or not it doesn't hurt them <coughs> but if they're in flower stage it triggers an extra hormone to further pursue flowering so we do thank you for watching this video it was quite a bit of time but we'll actually um, cover a bit more in, in some upcoming videos and actually showing these in application showing how this 315 watt will go up against a 600 watt HPS. Some customers are reporting using the 300 watt and actually getting away with um, that instead of a 600 watt, but that's with a properly designed setup, a good reflector, um, you know, good management. But a 210 watt will easily take a, the, 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 the place of a 400 watt HPS. Um, that's a given. The 315 watt, in my opinion, does actually compete with the 600 watt. I actually, that's one of the tests that I've done, but we like to go off other customers' um, information as well. But we hope you enjoyed this video and hope it was somewhat educational. If you have any tidbits um, that you'd like to share with us, um, don't hesitate to send us a message or an email. Thanks again, be safe.